everyone. Welcome to Tutorials Point. Now, after learning about the basic features of enzyme, let us now see the specific characteristics of enzymes. Now, so the learning objective will be to state and describe the features of enzyme, the properties of enzymes which are responsible for its structure as well as its functions. So, what we will do is, we will first see the general properties of the enzymes and then take up individual properties in detail. So, the first property is that they are large sized, high molecular weight, water soluble colloidal compounds which are biological in origin. So, biological in origin means found inside the living organisms. Now, they are soluble in water. Being soluble in water gives them a colloidal nature. So, this is a property that since they are biomolecules, they have to be large size and high molecular weight, also soluble in water. Now, the second property is they are wholly, either completely or partially proteinaceous in nature. Now, we have learned that proteins are either simple pro proteins or conjugated proteins. So, that ways enzymes are proteins with either wholly proteins completely being proteins or they are partly proteinaceous in nature. Now they are required in micro amounts, we know that they are required in micro amounts just like the catalyst and also they are not used up during a reaction. Now because they are proteins, what type of proteins are they? We have four structure levels of protein. So the enzymes are have a three dimensional tertiary structure of the protein. Now because of this three dimensional tertiary structure of the protein, they are affected by change in temperature or pH. If there is a slight change in temperature or pH, then the effect, effect will be directly on the structure of the enzyme. Now, they are very specific on what substrate they are acting on. So, they are substrate specific. They do not change the equilibrium constant. Means that if a reactant is converted into product, then the equilibrium between them is not the change, it's just the speed of the reaction is increased. How? By lowering of the activation energy. We will be discussing these properties in detail in upcoming slides. Now, they are very efficient, efficient as in they do their job very properly. So, they have a very high turnover number. Now, enzymes usually catalyze reversible reactions only. So, we come to the conclusion that the most of the metabolic reactions are reversible in nature, unlike the chemical reactions which happen in the laboratory, which can be both reversible as well as non-reversible. Now, enzymes can be either intracellular or present inside the cell, or they can be extracellular, which means that they come out of the cell and act upon a particular molecule. Now let us discuss individual properties in detail for more clarification. The first property, enzymes are partly or wholly proteins in nature. Now we say they are proteins in nature. Proteins means they are made up of long chain of amino acids. So they are made up of long chain of amino acids as you can see. Now ribozyme and RNA is, these are the two enzymes in which RNA is acting as a catalyst. So they are not proteinaceous in nature. Now since they are proteins, what type of proteins are they? They are tertiary structure of the protein. Now how was the tertiary structure formed? The tertiary structure was formed by coiling, hydrogen bond bonding and folding of a primary structure of the protein. So this is, if this is a long protein, it has undergone foldings and hydrogen bondings to form a three dimensional globular structure of the protein. Now the tertiary structure of the protein, it is because of this tertiary structure that the enzymes are so stable and also soluble in water. Now next, enzymes are substrate specific. Now we have said that the enzymes have a tertiary structure. So because of the foldings, we know some pockets or depressions are also formed inside the structure. So imagine this to be an enzyme. So this is the enzyme, right? Now this is a substrate. So substrate means substrate is nothing but a reactant. So this enzyme is specific for this substrate only. It will only fit inside it. So substrates are molecules on which enzyme act to catalyze a biochemical reaction. 
Now every enzyme works on a specific substrate. For example, if you have to digest sucrose, we have sucrose, sucrase. For maltose, we have maltase. For lactose, we have lactase. So all the enzymes are specific for a particular substrate. But where does this substrate bind? What is the area where the substrate binds? So these areas are the pockets which are formed by three-dimensional coiling to form the tertiary structure of the protein. And they are called active sites. So substrate binds as a specific site of the enzyme which has amino acid residues. So there is a specific site in the enzyme, this site which has specific amino acid residues which recognizes the substrate and through the bonding bonds with the substrate. Now, active site has a specific shape because of the tertiary structure of the protein. The active site, it consists of a, some residues. What are those residues? They are simply amino acids since we only have amino acids in a protein. These amino acid residues form temporary bonds with the substrate, changes the configuration and ultimately leads to formation of the end product. So the residues catalyze reaction of the substrate most of the enzymes have specificity and they can react with a specific substrate only. That is the reason we say that enzymes are substrate specific and substrate binds on the active site of the enzyme. Now enzymes lower the activation energy. Now what is the activation energy? So activation energy is the minimum amount of energy. It is more than that energy which is the free energy of the reactants, which is required to bring about a reaction. So that energy is called activation energy. Now enzymes are increasing the speed of the reaction by lowering this activation energy. So what happens is just imagine a boy pushing a ball across a hill or a mountain, right? So if there is no external force, this boy and the barrier is very high this boy will not be able to cross the mountain so easily. It, it will require more force. But here, if this barrier is low, then easily the ball can cross the mountain. So what is happening is the barrier is lowered. Now every reaction, every reaction in which the reactants are converted into product has certain energy barrier. Now this energy barrier has to be crossed. So there's a minimum amount of energy which is required to start a reaction. And when that reaction starts, if that energy is low or the energy barrier is low, then the reaction can happen very easily. More collisions in the reactants will happen and more products will be formed. So all chemical reactions have a potential energy barrier that must be overcome before the reactants are converted into products. So if this is a reactant and this is a product, if this is an uncatalyzed reaction, means there is no catalyst or there is no enzyme in the reaction, then the normal activation energy which has to be overcome to convert into product is very high. But here, if enzyme is present, then the changes happen in the configuration of the substrate and the bonding, bond formation and breakage happens. As a result of which, an alternate path is created. To be kept in mind is that it is not changing this activation energy. It is just lowering this activation energy, creating an alternate path. So enzyme, react, enzyme binds with the reactant and easily the products are formed. More reactants are now participating since the barrier has reduced from this to this. So activation energy enables reactants to enter into reactive state. Now what is the reactive state? It is this state. So this is called transition state. This state is the reactive state. Any reactant has to reach this state, this state to get converted into product where it is found at the top of the energy barrier. So when enzyme is present, the transition state is attained very fast. Now enzyme provide an alternate pathway. It is not breaking or removing the earlier pathway. It is providing an alternate pathway. Now if you have a lower, lower mountain to cross, obviously you will easily go and cross that mountain only. That is the path the reactants also take. Now the total energy of the system remains just the same. See. The total energy, the energy released, it remains just the same. It is only an alternate pathway which is lowering the activation energy. And the equilibrium constant is absolutely not disturbed. The equilibrium is achieved at the same level but only the time varies. 
Now enzymes have high turnover number. They are very efficient. What is the turnover number? Turnover number means how many substrates are converted into product by one enzyme molecule in one minute. So number of substrate transformed into product per minute by one enzyme molecule. So if the turnover number is more, the enzyme is more efficient. For example, catalase has a turnover number of some 5 million per minute. Means 5 million molecules are substrate are converted into product by catalase. Carbonic anhydrase is the most efficient enzyme. It has around 36 million turnover number. Also, enzyme work as specific temperature and pH. Now we know since they are proteinaceous in nature, the active site has amino acid residues formed by three-dimensional folding. Now if the temperature and pH is increased or raised to extremes, then that structure will get distorted and now the substrate cannot fit inside it. So that is the reason since the active site get disturbed, the whole enzyme's function is reduced or it becomes non-functional. Enzyme has a specific temperature, since they are proteins, they get denatured by extremes of temperature, which results in destruction of tertiary structure and the active site. Example, the range of optimum temperature for all the enzymes around 25 to 40 degrees Celsius, except for some thermophilic enzymes, which are found inside the thermophilic bacteria, which are found in extremes of temperature like around 70 degrees Celsius. Also same for pH because it causes ionization of the active site, the active site is disturbed. So there is an optimum pH range which is 6 to 7.5 except for some acidic enzymes which are found inside our stomach like pepsin and trypsin which is a basic enzyme. Now to summarize we can say that enzymes are large sized, high molecular weight, water soluble, colloidal, biological in origin molecules, they are wholly or partly proteinaceous. They are made up of long chain of amino acids, now, except for RNAs and ribozyme in which RNA acts as a catalyst. They have a three dimensional tertiary structure and they are specific substrate. So they have a specific substrate which binds to a specific site which contains a series of amino acid residues which is known as active site of an enzyme. So the enzyme always binds to the active site. The substrate always binds to the active site of the enzyme. Now, for example, maltase acts on maltose. Enzyme does not change the equilibrium constant of a reaction. It simply lowers down the activation energy of the reaction. And they are very efficient. They have high turnover number. And also, they are very specific to temperature and pH. So this was all about the properties or characteristics of enzyme. Now we have to know how these enzymes act. What is their mechanism of action, which we will be learning in upcoming videos. Till then, thank you very much. Tutorialspoint.com. Simply easy learning.